Hey guys, Rusty here with the Rusty Forge, and today we're going to break down some of the animation features for Pixel Studio. We're not going to go into the more advanced features, which is the frames and layers feature that they've just recently put out, but we're going to go into some of the other stuff that's going to really help you out, like um, animation clips, like uh, um, onion skin, like background textures. Uh, so first off, let's go to our settings, and in the settings area, uh, oh, also we're going to talk about sprite sheets and sequences and how to properly save your stuff. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, let's go into the users area, turn on background, and you can actually set the background color to whatever you want. So let's set it to this nice little pink color. So that's going to give us a nice background like this. But as you can see in our frame up here, it's not there. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with the animation features. Uh, in here, you have something called animation clips. And this is really nice because you can create different animation clips and uh, have them all saved in the same file. So when I make this character here, I make all my clips uh, based upon it. And I create one clip and I call it my basic design. And in my basic design, it has my frontal view of the character and my side view of the character. And anytime I create a new script, instead of going to the create new and creating starting from scratch, I just use the copy basic design, all right? So by copying it, it takes the basic design and it creates a new one that looks identical to it. But one of the cool features is, let's go to our jump here. You have what you have at your frame delays, okay? And so these are in your animations that you're creating. It sets the amount of time that's going to be delayed between frames. You can change all these and change them all to make them equal the same right here or you can uh, change them individually in here. You can actually um, click them up here. As you can see, that's still highlighted and it changes it. But for my jump animation, um, I want them to be in the air a little bit longer just so I can see what it looks like. But these don't carry over to your sprite sheets or your sequences, so this really doesn't matter. Um, you have your move back and forth functions, as you see. Um, it allows me to move my frames right here, back and forth between the two. Got my copy feature paste, clone, they're all the same, you know, delete. And you can even make a Giphy out of this, but you can also make a GIF file, um, a GIF file, however you want to pronounce it, in the save feature, uh, if you want to do that yourself. So this clip is really amazing because it allow, again, it allows you to have all these different things. But now here's the cool part. That one is called onion skin. I typically set this on two to three when I'm doing my animations. What this is gonna allow me to do is start seeing where the changes are taking place. So this was just my normal character, but here you see I might where my legs used to be, but now I have this jump. Then down here, you can see where my hat used to be, my legs used to be, and my nose used to be right here. When we click on the last one, you can see where my uh, nose was, where my back of my head was, and where my feet were, these are the lighter ones. These are my feet from my second frame. Uh, and this one's the feet from the third frame. It's because it only goes back two. So by using the onion skin, it allows you to see your animation on here so you can kind of know where things were. So you don't have to constantly be clicking here, then back to here, then here, and back to here to look at these things. You can just see where they are naturally. All right, now let's get into the saving area, guys. All right, now let's get into saving our uh, creation for either a sprite sheet or a sequence. We want to go into settings here, and we want to turn off the background color so it doesn't be not transferred. So go here, go to save, and you can typically raise the size up for it, but since these are your actual pixel size, you don't want to do that. Just go to sprite sheet. You can make it a long one down. I prefer mine to go this way. Uh, a feature that's been requested a couple times in the Discord forum is to have all your animation clips in one export. Currently, right now, you have to go in and manually uh, export each animation clip, which can get annoying, but it's actually a good way of being able to store all your animations in separate files and um, labeling your stuff better. I actually prefer to do a one space, and that's because I, a lot of my tile sets this allows me to see the divide between them. Uh, it becomes a little bit harder if you don't. And a sequence actually, what it does is it saves these as individual files in a folder. 
And so for me, I use pocket code on my phone and it does not allow me to use a uh, sprite sheet. So I would need to use a sequence here. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna save all these files uh, for this particular animation in this folder here. And uh, I can override that. So if I'm saving multiple clips, I'm gonna have to actually change these names uh, for each of the clips so they can be saved in there. So this one I would save as run, or minimax run, uh, minimax jump, minimax, etc., etc., etc. I'm gonna make another video coming up soon on the new animation features, the frames and layers feature. I'm excited about that and learning more about that.